Welcome to a brand new year, a brand oh new God. season, and a brand new episode of Snobcast. We made it, folks. Oh, we yeah. barely made it, but the thing is, we almost didn't make it because we're uh, stuck inside. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, fla- uh, like throwback. Let's throw back to a year ago. We're almost in the same situation, except now nice. it's earlier in the year. Yeah, exactly. well, it's also technically worse. Is it? Hey, is, it yeah. is it really? <laughs> yeah, there was no curfew then. <laughs> it's a hundred percent worse. The fact is that. There is now a curfew here in Montreal, when in the in the province of Quebec, at uh, 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Now, I was already home at that time, but for some reason, I still have crazy anxiety. Honestly, it it's was, really cutting it into my burglary time. A few days ago, <laughs> <laughs> it's cutting into my burglary time. It's rough, also cutting in, It's also cutting into me and Steve time. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, it's sad. It's right. sad, man. I can't have, I can't have oh. Steve over past seven o'clock or seven thirty. Oh, that's that's. I feel really sorry for you. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, you're, you're okay there, Tom. Right? You have a girlfriend and stuff. I'm Steve has I'm good. Look at this. I'm good. I got this hole behind me. It goes straight into the kitchen and then to the backyard, and then I could jump the fuck off and kill myself. Nice. Uh just, just what the knife. doctor ordered. Just, just what the swan doctor knife. ordered. Don't we have a special episode uh, today? It's the first day, first first episode. Not the first day of the year, but it's the first episode of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season three, by the way, we've made season it to season three. three. Yeah, season three, uh, episode three hundred and one. <laughs> and it's and it's taken us three seasons to film ourselves. Are Isn't we gonna tell? Something? Are we gonna tell Anthony or or our guest? Are we gonna tell our yeah. guest that he's the three hundred and first guest? <laughs> Wow, it's an yeah. honor, honestly. Yeah. Before we just before we invite him in, uh, uh, hype, you're doing well. You're okay. Hey, you're stressed. Uh, but you're okay. Yeah, you know, business as usual, as they say. You look very, uh, very calm, very nice. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm drinking, so. Oh, you're looking nice, uh, nice beard. Nice beard. <laughs> as they, as yeah. they say, you know, as they say, Steve. I'm fucking Irish. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't uh, say that. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Chef Tom, uh, you're doing okay. I know you're 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 wearing your Gusto catering T-shirt because you have um, some sort of fucking contest going on. Mm, yeah, to, well, it's, it's happening. It's uh, it's happening on Monday. So by the time this airs, it'll be over. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Next, so be... next, next time, I'll try and uh, help make it coincide with our recording. That would be great. Yeah. It would. It would. So I just I can send my like... food to the Netherlands. I was just gonna say. Yeah. Make yeah. you guys some Swedish meatballs. I hear you guys like Ikea. <laughs> hey. Hey. And that's, uh, a without, spicy uh, matzo ball. <laughs> that's a spicy meatball. Oh, meatball. Right. That was a matzo ball. Oh, right. well, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, I'd love to invite our uh, our first guest of the new year. Uh, actually, you know what, Tom? You should have. You should. Uh, no, I'll on. invite him. I'll invite him. Our first guest of the new year is. None other than Anthony Lisho. We're gonna bring him into the into the. You guys are gonna be able to see him in the chat. We already know he's there. He's patiently awaiting. So uh, mm. we'll bring him in and uh, we'll do a little intro and uh, we'll talk about stuff and uh, then we'll go live our lives. Yeah, as much as we can. As much yeah. as we can. Yeah. There yeah. we go. All right. And there Hello. we are. Hello. Finally, guest number three hundred and one. Wow, what an honor. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was the first guest of the year. If this sucks, that's that's terrible. <laughs> it's all on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. You're gonna, you. you're gonna set the whole me. stage for a year, so you know, don't fuck it yeah. up for us. <laughs> yeah. But also right. like it, it's already like uh 
what is it like the 12th day of the year and it already sucks so i mean it can't be that worse <laughs> yeah uh, what, what worse can i do than king francis himself uh who's <laughs> imprisoned us all so you know, <laughs> you know for a second i was scrambling trying to think <laughs> yeah. what did he do in like the 17th century and then i'm like oh wait <laughs> i was looking for steve because i know steve laughs at historical things i, I do yeah <laughs> only he's really only he's, historical he's I was really gonna I was that's gonna really big on I was gonna come on and say hello, comrades, but I didn't want to upset people because everybody's so touchy about any. Oh, joke. Steve, you should have <laughs> worn your anything. CCCP. <laughs> you should have <laughs> worn your fucking jacket, Steve. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was pretty hard for that, that Russian also, to repurpose the Soviet anthem, you know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, we should be playing it now through the streets. Instead of those guys that drive around to sharpen your knives, <laughs> they should just be playing that. <laughs> uh, Anthony, welcome to the show. It's Thank a you. Pleasure to have you here. And uh, I know we've been talking about it for a long time. And um, it's uh, nice. Are. You, you, and uh, you and Tom are 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 like the better friends, uh, from what I understand. So do you guys know each other inside out. Yeah, I, I mean, in, uh, it depends what you mean by inside out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not you, like, you know what I mean. mean. Exactly you know what what mean. I mean. <laughs> no, but yeah, Tom is a, a dear friend, and um, yeah, we just been, uh, got close a couple years ago, and uh, and you know, been talking about movies and life and and everything in between ever since. So he wanted to have me on, and uh, and I was uh, I was pretty excited to come on here because you guys are pretty funny, and uh, and yeah, I'm excited to to see how this goes and. See if I could offer anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for um, for fluffing our Garfield. Uh, before, uh... <laughs> nice. Fluffing yeah. our Garfield. I don't know what that yeah. translates to. But the only thing is, thanks for petting our pussies. Like wow. that's the only yeah. thing that I'm thinking wow. right You're now. You're welcome. Mockery. Yeah. No, Steve and I were watching uh, the, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway the other night. Yeah. And. Uh, and one of the one of the the improv lines they used was fluffing their Garfield. So I thought I would. Do that. <laughs> that's that's actually really good. So good. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, again, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's uh, thanks for uh, saying that we're funny and stuff. I guess we're okay. We do all right for ourselves. Um, but I mean, tell us about you. I mean, uh, what's going on? What do you do? What are you doing? You have a nice setup there. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm trying to figure myself out like most people these days. But uh, I'm, I'm a guy who grew up with a, a lot of passions. I, I did a bit of music before, did a little bit of recording. I was in I went to school in finance. So I, 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 I actually worked in that for like 10 years. And then more recently in the last two years, I, I started a, or, or actually I, I joined my, my wife's media production company. And so we've been making, um, you know, content and videos and photo shoots for different brands, different people, different organizations uh, for the last two years. And um, recently uh, we started getting into making some short films uh, and hopefully soon some documentaries as well. So we're just sort of at the beginning stages of that in the learning process. Um, and yeah, just, just trying to have fun with it and trying to do something that, that I enjoy. So, so you didn't study film at all? I didn't study film at all. I, um, I learned, I would say I learned mainly um, in the beginning, we were, we were a photo production studio primarily. And I was still yeah. working in finance. I was, uh, I was in New York a lot working um, in uh, management consulting uh, and um, started getting really interested in, in art, especially while I was over there. Uh, there's just such... Uh, incredible art there's incredible filmmakers there's incredible comedians I mean anything uh, if you're looking for inspiration it's a great place right so um, yeah then then when I would when I when I would come home I took a big interest in uh, what my wife was doing and I started to get really interested in lighting specifically and so I already had a sound background I uh, I learned lighting or I learned the beginnings of lighting and um, then one day when I was, uh, well, for lack of a better better word, just really unhappy in my job and like um, sort of like not seeing myself uh, sustaining this for a long time because it, it wasn't something that really lit me up at all. 
um, or didn't anymore at least. And um, at that point, my wife handed me a camera and she said, why don't you, why don't you try video? It's a bunch of stuff that you like. Uh, all in one and it's uh, it's so neurotic and insane and uh, and uh, you got to learn to do so many different things so you'll never be bored and and so uh, she said that we went on a vacation I did my first like short film with her we got a model out there and we did like a short fashion film and uh, yeah it was kind of hooked it's uh, nice. it, it's, it's really crazy it's really crazy some of the stuff that you guys <clears throat> well, some of the stuff all the guys the stuff that you guys put out is actually like insane and to insane. see to see like the 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 you know you'd think you'd think that the production behind it is like you know like 50 people super huge like God, not yet you, you, yeah i know i know but like just to you know and then when you see when you see like the the hustle and bustle of like your your core team that you guys have that that go into it it's actually it's it's nuts what you guys put out yeah, it's a it's a little mom and pop shop production company essentially, and uh, it started off just me and my wife, and now uh, we've we uh, have uh, someone new joining on the team, Alessia, Tommy's girlfriend, actually. Ah, uh, Alessia. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's heard of her. <laughs> You've heard of her, yes. And um, and uh, not to mention, yeah, we work with a lot of creatives, so we're not a we don't see ourselves really as an agency per se, where we represent people specifically but more a uh, production company that operates kind of like an agency in the sense that we collaborate more. So we're trying to keep hierarchies out of the thing and just uh, just collaborate as much as we can. And, uh, you know, we want to be, um, I guess, equals with our collaborators and with our clients, and we want to work towards the same goal. So that's, that's sort of how we're trying to build the business out. And how long has it been uh, that you've been uh, doing, uh, like, uh, the media side of things? Yeah, so Haven's been uh, open for four years. The first two years was primarily focused on photography production with a little bit of video production. And uh, I came in two years ago and I uh, started to help Leanna, uh, my wife, Anna Carbone, um, build out uh, the video side. So we do nice. studio rentals. We, uh, we do photo and video production, uh, small scale, and uh, doing some, some larger scale stuff now. Um, and, uh, yeah, we service, like, Small, medium business, sometimes large industry as well. Clients like uh, Arden and um, did some work for uh, Rubino Shoes. Did some work for um, okay, cool. A lot of fashion stuff on the um, on the commercial side. Wicked, yeah, nice. And I mean, but then like uh, uh, was it in twenty twenty? You 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 shot your first like short film, right? Like uh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 with so, like uh, Matthew Jofrida and uh, Joy yeah. Morbido. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two, 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 the two characters, just them two, like. <laughs> yeah, just them two alone by themselves are, are, are a movie, um, but yeah. So basically, what it, what had happened with that is, um, we um, we sort of been doing a lot of uh, um, work, like I said, in the commercial and in, in the uh, uh, fashion space a lot, and um, although we love to do that, of course, like. <laughs> myself and Liana have different passions, different uh, things we wanted to try, also different things we wanted to learn. And this was something that I was thinking about doing for a while, like doing something uh, with narrative film. Mm. And um, one day, a buddy of ours was over and he, he asked me if uh, I'd ever wanted to make a short film. And he said, I've got this script. Uh, do you want to check it out? And uh, I said, yeah, sure. That sounds good. And, and this was just right before the pandemic started like last year um okay so, so it's perfect what, year, what, year, what, year, what year is this i don't even know yeah i don't know either yeah 1984 maybe uh, yeah. oh, 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 oh wait that needs one of these that needs a anna you get an eddie murphy and a nelly all in one yeah how uh, many yeah. people get that that's pretty that's quite an honor <laughs> thank you thank you for me uh so, yeah, just go, just to go back, we uh, we he brought me a script. He actually brought me a physical paper script. I, I found that so cool. Like he could have emailed me a PDF or something, but he brought me a paper yeah. script when I didn't even think it was going to bring me anything. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We started to work it from there. It's it's like a neo noir uh, style crime drama. It's going to be like 
15, you peak Steve's interest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I just saw his yeah. eyebrow go up. <laughs> but the main, the main idea, the whole point of this whole thing of embarking on that whole journey was at that point, all everything had to close, right? So even our production company was closed and we knew a lot of uh, artists that were out of work or uh, had way less work and were just really uh, bummed out, you know? So we, uh, myself and, and David, David Oiseau is the, you know, co-director, co-produced this with me. Um, we, uh, we, we got on a GoFundMe, we raised some money um, and we, we did this small production, uh, you know, with res respecting all the guidelines of the COVID stuff as well. So we, we weren't a huge cast and crew about like, you know, 10, 11 people max at any given time um and we yeah we made it happen and the, the whole point was to get us to be able to do something during the lockdown and and to it was a lot of people who had never done film specifically before so a lot of creatives that work in video and photo and all these different things but hadn't specifically done uh film before so just giving people you know hopefully an, an opportunity to learn something did you did you by chance like watch anything prior to making that film that it like inspired you to like go with your approach or? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely watched a lot of film noirs <laughs> up until uh, we, we made it, which was funny because the this is a, film noirs are like heavy movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you watch like, yeah. like five, 10 of them in a row, it's like, uh, you know, like you, you watch seven and after seven, you're like, should, should yeah, I really watch another one of these? Problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You start so, smoking. You start smoking and drinking heavily. <laughs> yeah, which honestly I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, but definitely the smoking. Like I, I watched so many film ones that they smoked so much that I definitely picked it up more than I should. Um, but but they're cool movies. I, I find them really yeah. fun, uh, fun because they they've got this sort of like. Uh, if you get overall like the the craziness in them they've got like good social commentary uh, 100%. a lot of the time right and so they're really smart movies and they use the light really well and i don't know we just thought it was a, a good a good way of of learning not that um not that I, I you know i specifically set out wanting to make a film more but it just sort of sort of happened like that yeah I remember Did how crazy you, it was. What, what? I, I was on set with you guys on your, I think, was that the last day that I came? It was the last day of shooting? I, yeah, you came the last day. It's fucking hard. It's, <laughs> it's really fucking hard. I just show. remember I mean, the second I came in, you were already on, like, your second chain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you're crazy, <laughs> you're crazy, people. You, uh, how, how many days did you shoot? We shot uh, six days. Six days. Nice. Okay. That's, that's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty intense, especially when, uh, you know, it's your first crack at it. So there's a, a lot of learning experiences. But I'll be really honest with you. I, th I thought we did a really good job, all things considered, you know, uh, in terms of like budget and experience wise. We're, we're super happy with it. And now it's, um, you know, we started we got like the first cut done and it, it's like a little janky, but it's um, it's starting to take form and it's really cool to nice. see. And uh, it, just the memories you build with uh with everyone there and the fact that we were able to do that while COVID was was happening in October and still able to have that like com camaraderie with people was really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. What and was I mean, what, what, sorry, go ahead, John. No, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. What, what was the most memorable part of shooting like kind of in those conditions? What was like a really standout, I don't know, scene mm -hmm. or day or something that-, that Besides went Tommy's food. Besides <laughs> Tommy's food. Besides <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, well, definitely the, the the first day was was crazy just because of the like electricity of like holy shit we're actually doing this. You have like a bunch of props. There's people here. There's like you know wardrobe. There's all these little things that um, you you had to think of and and everything has sort of a story. Like you know oh yeah. the bar yeah it's like I had to switch bar because of COVID and. I actually, the bar I switched to ended up being way better and way cooler for lighting and all that. So it's like these yeah. like roller well, that's coasters. How, that's how ride. it works sometimes. Yeah. 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 For sure. It's it's a thing that you could plan all you want, and then you you gotta sort of let go of it and um, yeah, you know, just like get it done, you know. Yeah. yeah. How's it going in post? <laughs> um, not bad. Not bad. We uh, we we did the first cut like i said now it's got it's got a, a few steps it's got to get like some sound design done uh, so that's that's going to be a thing this week um 
then we're going to start to um, to work on the voices, um, overdub anything that didn't work out. There's like a, one or two little things that we, we might need to overdub. Uh, then it's going to go to like another round of like editing after the cast and crew sort of season and gives us some feedback. And uh, then it'll go to, yeah, coloring, finishing, mixing, mastering. Right. So, so what's like a tentative work. date, the tentative release date? What's uh Oh man, we, we haven't put one just because everyone's quite busy and, and you know, us we're yeah. running the, the business on our end and, and David <clears throat> works full time and, and, and whatnot. But we'd uh mm -hmm. we'd definitely like to have it out by, by the spring. Yeah, that would be great. And it's gonna be a yeah. short film. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh do you have the title? Can you say the title or not? I think I could I think I could say the title. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, you could say they said you could say it. Okay, perfect. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie said it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Jamie. Um, <laughs> the title is uh, is going to be "Fool Me Once." So, um, yeah, like you said before, uh, there's Matthew Jafreda, there's Joy Morabito, um, there's uh, Juliette Louis, who's actually Matthew's oh, yeah. uh, girlfriend. I don't know if you guys yeah. know her. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and there's uh, Rick Godgiven, who's uh, uh, also uh, amazing to work with and uh, yeah we got a s special guest in Cali Technis who also made an appearance who's a Montreal artist so I'm not nice. sure if you guys know her but she uh, yeah she did a great job she's singing uh, she's got a scene where she's singing in the bar uh, oh where, yeah like, I thought you guys bar. Said, that? yeah so uh, that was really fun and a big fan of her music so glad to glad to get her on board as well I can't. I, I can't wait to see this thing, and I hope you submit it to some festivals. Yeah, yeah and I, I forgot one. I, I forgot to say Philip Terrien, who plays the detective, who's who's amazing as well and uh, great to work with. So uh, that's a great yeah. name, Philip Terrien. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. I played I play the detective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, he's got a great smoking scene. He's got a great smoking scene. And he has, you gotta, you gotta. Have, With a yeah. name like that, you gotta have a great. Either, oh, that, either that, or he murders somebody perfectly. Just backlight <laughs> someone. Just backlight someone and give him a cigarette, and it's a film noir, man. And, and you have to hear, the, you have to hear the bird of the. You have to hear yeah, the bird the, of the cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crackling. The crackling. Steve, yeah, weren't you in a? Was it a film noir or, the, or, or was it a detective? It was, it was um kind of horror, like a horror, horror film. Film. Yeah. Ah. psychological horror type film. <laughs> Steve, yeah. uh, Steve I was, was in I was a, a, cop. a movie too. Uh, he was really? a cop. Yeah, you were, you were, you were in it. Yes, yeah, oh, amazing. A, a short film, short film. Uh, it's so uh, fun, man. It's it but that, but that short film was shot uh, in twenty four hours, uh, <laughs> wow. on on the on the coldest day of the year, uh, like near the border. <laughs> And uh, and by like the twentieth hour, we were all hysterical. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were like <laughs> quoting the Scorsese movies, laughing uncontrollably. We were like yeah. a mess after. Yeah, it's hard. Steve was like, frozen. You know. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so bad. It's, it's true really you were wearing a track yeah. jacket. No, <laughs> no, I was I was in my uh, my sheriff getup. Oh, your sheriff getup. Yeah, okay. and it, it was fucking cold. <laughs> That's a track really jacket. Cool. That's a Slavic man number one. <laughs> <laughs> Squatting in front of a building, smoking a cig. <laughs> um, Anthony, I, I'd like to talk to you about, you mentioned you worked, or you did you live in New York City? Uh, yeah, I was living there like two, three months at a time when, uh, when I was working in consulting. So I would do two, three months yeah. there, come back to Montreal, do two, three months as well. So so, how fucked is New York City? <laughs> it's, it's, fucked. it's very fucked. It's, um, it's wild. It's a wild ass city. Like oh no, it, I mean it's great for a lot of things and it's really motivating. But yeah, um, yeah I feel like um, you know people are like eating breakfast while they're walking, and how it's can just one city be filled intense. with so many assholes? I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand. There's a lot of there's a lot of really nice people too. It's, okay. it's like kind of bit, it was i mean it's very friendly um as well really yeah for sure and, and, and new yorkers are friendly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah new yorkers are generally friendly and like there's just a lot of people so for sure there's a lot of assholes <laughs> depends where you are if you're, if you're yorkers in the are district nobody looks at you was but that if you, to, if you go to harlem it's different no you know I, I mean harlem was getting pretty gentrified by the time i was there oh yeah 
Yeah, yeah. It's just so expensive to live there now that I mean, crime crime got so far away before uh, well before leaving <laughs> the last year. <laughs> I was I wasn't there this year uh, this year or last year it was it was like two and a half years ago but uh, like New York got really really like cleaned up um, if you want to call it that uh, but it's just everybody's chasing somebody else so like the somebody who makes three hundred grand is chasing a millionaire and the millionaire is chasing a hundred millionaire and the hundred millionaire is chasing a billionaire the billionaire doesn't even know who he's chasing and that's all like it's just yeah That's but in the end is. in the end the rats are all chasing them <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Like, yeah. Probably. Probably. Yo, they're the new york city subway rats that are sizes of dogs I, just I, chasing. I had a couple uh mice in my apartment one time i got this i i, I was looking for apartments because i was i was set to go down for another two months and i uh i go on uh airbnb and I find a place and it looks super nice, you know, and it's like not that expensive for New York. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I, I it was in Chelsea, like on top of like art galleries oh, shit. and shit. I'm like, whoa, this That's is That's a great start. This, this is good. Okay, let me let me see if they're they're okay with this. And so I asked my boss and he approved it, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I get there and um I I go I go into the apartment, everything's great, it's me and another guy. We, we had said we don't mind, you know, uh, shacking up in the same uh, apartment together. We'd rather a bigger apartment and, you know, our own rooms and stuff. So it was super cool. And then uh, this was like a uh, Monday that we got there. Monday was perfect. Tuesday wow. night. <laughs> <laughs> we started hearing some shit and like there was mice in the place. Right. So we set the traps and all these things and OK, whatever, you know. But that wasn't the, the actual problem. The actual problem was this place, unbeknownst to us, was on top of a place called One Oak. And One Oak oh, is the, a the club. hardcore hip-hop club. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, had, that, is, that is open Tuesday to Sunday till 4 a.m. <laughs> Fuck. So uh, it's not even a, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, and not really because that that was like that's more like a techno. Yeah. This no, was like so a a <laughs> 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 like it was just like the whole room. Water is rippling in a glass. <laughs> it was it was nuts till four a.m. And after two weeks, I I, I told the Airbnb got to fuck off, and I told him I gotta go. I'm not paying you for the last two weeks. This is insane um you lied wow. and you said this was a cool place oh my god <laughs> not only are there mice but there's hip-hop music playing all the time oh all that's the time. why the mice are out because the vibration yeah no it's yeah. horrible it's horrible <laughs> it dislodged them yeah but other than that new york is a great place there's always there's something for everybody there's yeah i found a bar that um used to play the montreal canadians games Oh, nice. So we used to go there in the playoffs, and I found um, a place. I forget I, the name escapes me now, but um, but uh, they made like poutines and uh, and uh, smoked meat sandwiches, Montreal How did style. They compare? How did they compare? Well, well, this place was modeling them off Montreal, okay. so they were they were okay. like Montreal style uh, smoked meat and poutine. They even had okay. like the smoked meat puts in, which I mean doesn't get more Montreal than that. Yeah, right? yeah. And so, um, but they got their own. They got their pastrami and their bagels, and they're not gonna yeah. like that. I'm that I'm saying this, but I like our stuff better, Oof. generally. Like I I'm like a New York bagel, bagel person. Oh, wow, prefer, wow. Yeah. I prefer our stuff, but I don't know. I don't know if that's nature or nurture. No, it's okay. He's uh, he's alone in this one, so you're okay. Right. Okay. The, the only Guys. thing, the only thing I can really say, like that, like I love, like well, I love New York, but like food wise, uh, that specialty is like a bialy, so like which is like the the English muffin with the bagel, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like the onion on top. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've actually like, never had one, which is crazy. Oh fuck! So good. We so gotta good. go back. You wanna go next week? That's what I, I speak. I mean, I Let's stay at that same Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably open. That's the best part. It's probably open. The club oh, is definitely right. open. Yeah. The, with the base, there's just particles everywhere. Yeah. 
I need to ask. Um, uh, so you lived in New York. I feel like it's wild, you know, whatever. And, and uh, like, is that the first time you ever did shrooms? Uh, in I don't know if I ever did shrooms in New York. What a segue! Okay. I know, I know, I know, I know. That would be a pretty fucked up place to do shrooms. I feel in New York City. Yeah, just uh, run I block don't, after block. I don't think so because uh, I I tend to uh, equate the shrooms to like nature, and and okay. New York's the jungle, but it's not nature. Yeah, I feel like I would <laughs> it's a concrete jungle. Concrete jungle. I feel jungle. like I would exactly what Alicia Keys said. There's just so much going on and so many people. Uh, I don't think that's a good... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a good place. You don't want to be on a rooftop and just be like fucking tripping no. balls. No. <laughs> what do I do? No. I, I don't know. Empire State is so close. I, bet I, I feel like it's the rooftop. kind of thing... It's the kind of thing you would want You would want to be in like uh, at, a, at a chalet, like on a, on a lake. Yeah, that's the way know, I see it. Or a more. beach. But especially I, now... Like, now that I'm older, it's more, um, it's not about just uh, things like that for me. I'm not about like just tripping out or something like that. I try and like have some sort of experience and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's not, it's not like my uh, younger days where I was just getting fucked up. <laughs> but that I you see, to, I, I think it's just getting you. older. What's that? That's just about getting older. You know what I mean? Like before yeah, right. you used yeah, to get yeah, drunk. I guess. You used to get drunk. You used to, you know, everybody yeah. used to smoke weed to get like fucked up. Now it's just like I don't want to get fucked up. I just my knee hurts, and I just <laughs> want to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what sort of experiences uh, would you look for, Anthony? You said you do it more to kind of get something out of it. What's kind of what would you look for? Oh, you like, um, yeah, I guess, um, I guess, like just. Um, just uh, greater understandings, trying mm -hmm. to like dive deeper, understand myself a bit better, and try and get into like more uh, inner work and uh, being a bit more conscious about my, myself, the way I'm acting, stuff like that. So yeah. I think I'm using it more in that way now than before. Um, but yeah, tell me. That's uh, deep though. Like that, like, so, yeah. so the reason why I'm asking you about shrooms is because I would never do it. I'm too chicken shit. Yeah. Like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll smoke weed or whatever and like uh but like i'm too chicken shit to do that that's like too intense and and the fact that you're saying that you're doing this and then you have like some sort of like out of body experience or like uh like you, you like a searching type thing you know yeah. searching for yourself yeah. like are, are do you remember like was there ever a moment where you took you took shrooms and then you were like fuck okay and then then you remembered and you were like I found something about I found something out about myself that like you didn't know. Yeah, you know I mean? uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think um, I think just uh, for me, it's uh, the sense of like connect connectivity. I, okay. I I think like you know we go through life very like individualistic and like you know I'm trying to get to my goals and do my stuff and just like to have a, a feeling and a sense of um, of really being connected to everything and everybody is. Is, is kind of amazing and, and it's um it's i think more truthful than 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 all the bullshit that we're that we debate about all, all the time you know what i mean it's uh it goes back to something very primal very source so it's it's interesting when you start to think in those terms i think you open up a lot of like creativity a lot of like um uh I don't know. You just have access to to a little bit more. Like a lot of, like a lot of the boxes. And stuff, you know? Yeah, it just widens the perspective a little bit, you know. And, yeah. We should probably all get together and do that. You know that, huh? No. <laughs> we no. should have a snob circle. Yeah, I think if you do it with intention, if you do it with intention, and you you've got a goal in mind or something you want to work out, um, then yeah, you could have you could have a really nice experience. But you got to just do it properly and. Um, uh, a buddy of mine is studying neuroscience and he, he specializes in, in psychedelic research. And so, uh, you know, he talks a lot about set and setting. So having like a good, that's why New York City would be, would be a horrible idea. <laughs> so sensory overload, you know? So if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, you wanna, you wanna have a good set, like a good mindset. Like, okay, I'm going yeah. into it because, uh, you know, I'm thinking of this, or I, I even I just want to have fun, or, or, or whatever. But at least you, you know, you take it in that way, and um, and a good setting. 
so to make sure you're in a comfortable place a safe place that you feel good in and uh, mm -hmm. nature helps too so uh, yeah like what like what are the chances of like a really bad like a really bad bad trip you know what i mean like yeah. on the, i don't know really if, I don't you, know. if, you, if you take it like stupidly or I, I i guess if you take too much of it or if you go into it in a bad frame of mind i think i okay. think like what you you know garbage in garbage out type of thing on, on this mm -hmm. as well but I, I don't really know. It's not like I do uh, enough of that stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> you saw it really... before this. He was just shoveling it. Was fun. And I just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, so no, just no. so our I... listeners know, Anthony does not do shrooms regularly. Okay. <laughs> Mushroom oh, risotto oh, every night. Oh, one <laughs> time. <laughs> no. no, but um, yeah, no, it's more just uh, an occasional thing. But when I do do it now, I think I do it with a lot more um, intention, I guess. If with the, the times that you have done it, did it ever uh, give you like uh, like you're like holy shit? I I want to work on a new project. Like, did you ever have like a, like a inspiration? What the hell's the word I'm looking for? Inspiration. Thank you. Inspiration. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I ever had like a specific inspiration to work on a project. More like okay. a, a more of like an inspiration to pursue uh, a purpose Something. or a goal or a dream in general. Like. Um, I guess, like, again, going back to that understanding of con uh, connectivity and all that, and yeah. this, this, um, I don't know, this idea that you know you've got this this small amount of time over here, and you got to make the best of it. So it's kind of inspiring to see it in that way, and then to just take life that way. So what's the where's the where's the goal? Where's where do you want to be? Like, what do you what do you mm -hmm. see in like the next like? Let's say short term, you know what I mean? Like the next like, yeah. day, like year or two, what do you what do you want? Um I think the goal is to just um uh, I think the I don't want to I don't even want to use the word goal anymore because I think everything is so fucked up that you gotta be at a point where you're adaptable now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. really fucking matter what your goal is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh <laughs> so uh and and of course like that's half true because because yeah we're still gonna have our goals and our, and our ambitions and yeah. stuff but but maybe a better way is like uh where do you want to go where do i want to go i i definitely want to uh, continue to build the business and i want the business to service uh clients that um, are doing good in the world so i i definitely want uh we want to be helping people who are helping you know others but whether it could even just be that they're operating well as a company and fairly yeah. as a company um so it's uh it's really just about aligning ourselves with the right people on the business side and then um ideally um putting the i guess the structure in place so that we could also do these creative projects that we like to do um on uh on the side and so maybe um you know doing uh, one or two creative projects <clears throat> on a yearly basis that are uh, for me, at least uh, in the film world, uh, either documentary or nar narrative film, I'd love to continue doing that. Yeah. Have That's, you have you written anything like uh, like yourself? Like, have you? Do you have, like, are you a writer, or are you just are you more? Uh, um, you you uh, get other people. Uh, I I write a little bit. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't write the script for Fool Me Once. Dave had initially yeah. written it, and I sort of like uh, co-wrote it with him. We wrote some some different parts together. Um, okay, we, the uh, different drafts. I guess. Yeah, I I wouldn't say I'm an initiator in the writing process, but I'm definitely um, definitely a good editor of the writing process. And, and, and okay, I slot in more in that way. Um, yeah, more gonna, I, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, gonna come in and build. Yeah. Build, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and, and I, I mean, who, 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 yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, just uh, a big one for me in in the next year or two would be to to do a documentary. I, I've done some small ones here and there, and uh, I'd like to get one that's a little bit, maybe a 30, 40 minutes, or even even an hour twenty, if if possible. So um, looking, do you, yeah. Do you know what you would like to do in terms of documentary? Have you ever had an idea of you know what, I really <laughs> want to expand on something? I, I do I have uh, I have a few ideas but I don't want to say them right now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're, very specific. Uh, 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 they're very specific they're on specific people uh, I guess okay. I could say this I, I want to tell people stories like okay. um, like okay. regular people because I yeah. think there's a lot everyday of people, yeah. yeah a lot of incredible stories of well everyday people I guess 
is is how I characterize it. But they're so uh, such incredible people that I guess they're not everyday people. But um, that's true. Yeah, yeah just like yeah, just yeah, everyday people. Incredible people in disguise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's you a see lot. How there. Steve was trying to like uh, Steve was trying to like journal his way into it. So uh, what's yeah. the project you're working on there? Well, uh, I, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still I, I very. Once. <laughs> I'm still very new to the whole game, and I'm just taking one step at a time. I, that's why I, 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 I have some short-term goals, but I'm not really thinking too long-term because I just want to see how all this stuff plays out. And I know there's a, a huge role for media in the, in the coming years with, with everything going more and more online, and I just want to make sure that i don't get caught up just doing mindless work and yeah. um and that the work that we do is is good and good for people you know as much as possible because there's a lot of crap out there and um yeah <laughs> just want to yeah, be responsible about it well um, who are who would you say some of, who are some of your like uh cinematic influences like what are some of the films you grew mm -hmm. up watching yeah i mean if we're talking like um something that inspired a lot like or a director that inspired a lot this this film that we did is like i love the way scorsese tells stories like i think of like the departed as a film lot and it's just like such a great oh, one. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, steve right. so happy right it's now like, <laughs> he's like textbook the music choices he makes you know like when he's playing cream and robert de niro's there smoking a cig and like you know, good fellas like he's so uh iconic that um you know and he's he's italian so i love you know it's it's cool that we have like a paisan who's, yeah. who's killing the movie game, um, and I don't know. I just I, I like a lot of different kinds of film and a lot of different kinds of music. I'm really open to it, but um, I mean, yeah. I, I if if I just off the top of my head, I I guess like Kubrick, Tarantino, Guy Ritchie, uh, David Fincher, the, Nolan, like they're kind of insane. Yeah, the big guys, all the yeah. big guys. Yeah. Those yeah. guys, I, I think those guys, because they're, um, there's so many good filmmakers, but um, those guys, I think, stand out and maybe are the big guys, apart from the blockbuster guys, because they have such a distinct style, you know? Yeah. When I look at Tarantino, and it's like he's shifting timelines around and he's like, just like building everything up and he's always got like you know you know the music is like that like spaghetti western yeah, yeah. It's, you know, yeah. music. how come nobody says michael bay question that's why i i don't know i'm not a huge fan. look everyone likes independence day but i you know i think that's, but, that's uh, not michael bay <laughs> but really i want to i want a, a big goal oh, for this year a big goal oh, so for we did nothing year. good what's that <laughs> who did it I, I thought who did it the independence, independence day? day so he did nothing good steve, steve is having a connection um uh, christ <laughs> Independent Day is, uh, is Roland Emmerich. He did the, like uh, the day after tomorrow and all that stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> Michael Bay did Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, did garbage, and all the other shit. Career. I thought so you had one garbage. thing. Yeah. Uh, the Rock. Yeah. The Rock. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm gonna. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think my my goal this year is to watch a lot more independent films. And, yeah. and learn about like some more obscure di directors because man there's some really good stuff out there that i've been getting into yeah. um yeah. and some good, I, uh, good stuff internationally as well so yeah i uh I'll, I'll give you two suggestions that you can watch uh, when they become available i think it becomes sure. i think they come out sure. in february yeah. uh i yeah. watched last weekend i watched uh nomadland okay uh, with uh it's uh with francis mcdormand who's a fantastic actress from like Fargo and uh, your billboards. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, that film, like literally, I sat on my couch for like 45 minutes after the movie was done. And I did nothing with my life. Okay. So that's like, so, so it's deep. And that's, uh, how, that's how I felt after I watched like Interstellar or something. I just walked out and like, yeah. contemplated, <laughs> contemplated uh, life for a minute. Yeah, and you're just crying. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're right. um, Crazy. But uh, uh, so no Land comes out next month in February, and the other one I watched was Minari, which is a Korean American film. Uh, and uh, uh, man, that one was Korea, it's, uh, it's, 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 what's that? Korea, uh, some, some of these Korean directors, I know, I know he's an American director, but uh, it's just the, the yeah. incredible man. Even uh, what's his name, uh, Bung Joon 
Oh, who did Par- Parasite? Yeah. Uh, uh, Parasite. Yeah. What a yeah, movie. God. Jeez, man. Incredible stuff. Incredible yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can't Just believe a, it won all those great... awards. Oh, my God. I, like a yeah. foreign film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they deserved it, though. It was fucking crazy. Did you, did you guys, uh, Ant, I spoke to you about it, but yeah, did you watch uh, another round? No, not, not yet. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a that's such a great movie. What's that? Great the, movie, very deep. Uh, oh, Matt Michelson. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm writing all this yeah, down. Yeah, pretty much gonna make me. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> fuck up my whole week next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it. Can I make Can I make two suggestions? Sir? The Departed and the Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> These, these I think are well. One's definitely gonna like kind of fuel your your uh, little neo noir uh, like kind of binge, which is uh, Le Samurai from uh, Jean Pierre Melville. So that for sure you're gonna fucking like because it was like, Le Samurai. Yeah, it's like yeah. one of like the the premier of the French New Wave, all that shit. That like yeah. Oh, that yeah. you like and Rome Open City. I think you would like too. What was what was that freaking great film noir with? Um... With that French actor uh, and the little girl, uh, uh, the professional, the professional. Oh, oh my yes. god, what a sick movie! Genre no on this bitch. That was yeah. that was one of the ones that I watched on the on the film noir binge, wow. and then one of the more recent ones was um, well, I watched one with Brad Pitt. I forget the name. Ocean's um, Eleven. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. Spy Game. Uh, no. No. Um, <laughs> Oh, is it killing uh, them softly? Yeah, it's killing them softly. Exactly. Yeah. I really need to start watching some of these movies, guys. I gotta stop watching Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and I need to start watching (laughs) some of these movies. Well, don't jump to conclusions. And I I watched one called The Devil All the Time, which was a recent one. How is that? That looked interesting. It's fucking horrifically. Oh yeah, that's what we spoke about. Oh, we spoke about it. Yeah, but I don't remember that. It was about that one. What's What's that about? Oh it's my Robert God. Pattinson and like uh, yeah. the other dude, Tom Holland. It's this like creepy small town where everybody's sort of like, there's no, yeah, it's a classic film noir. There's no good guys. Everybody's sort of a bad guy, except the spiders. <laughs> and yeah, and it's just like everybody's sort of malevolent and people, there's just a horrible town full of horrible people and there's one kid trying to, I don't know, trying to save himself from all these crazy people. <laughs> Uh, but it's a uh, it's yeah it's, I remember. It's, uh, it's got like multiple storylines that all sort of converge okay. yeah uh, so you got like, these like two serial killers going around you got this kid and um you know some other stuff happening and all sort of converges really really cool but disturbing movie wow <laughs> yeah 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 definitely that um yeah so that's pretty amazing um i mean uh and if you want to stick around though we have a very special uh, segment now it's our our usual segment <laughs> week, uh, here on Snapcast, and um, uh, I don't know. Hype, are you ready? It's a new year. I, I am. Uh, I'm rather ready. I'm it, just gonna cue myself up a little better because I'm gonna. Okay, it's better. So in the meantime, we'll talk. It better be. It better be a banger, Steve. Because oh, uh, it, it, oh, it is. So here, I'm. I'm well, you want to explain, Jack, to to Anthony what this is? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So so what we do weekly. Um, is uh, the hype man's ethnic song of the week? Steve is very cultured, and uh, and Steve likes a lot of uh, different music. So every week we showcase uh, some of his favorite songs that are like either Serbian or Turkish. Sometimes Greek. it's Albanian turbo folk. Okay, cool. Yeah, it really depends cool. the week, honestly. And uh, this week I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, the first song of 2021 or whatever year this is. Uh, so I, uh, I mean, hype. Are you ready? I'm ready now. Can I? Um, can, can, can you, you want me to intro you? You can intro me, please. Here we go. The hype man's ethnic song of the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So um, <laughs> this week, you know, what's our first, uh, our first episode back? Uh, <laughs> In the new year, 2021, so I wanted to make it special. So I got actually have two songs. Oh. Uh, Whoa. And, <laughs> and actually, what happened here is I was um, I was listening to some music. Actually, um, 
I remember when I played the uh, Bramchalka there a few uh, a few weeks back. Oh yes, yes, yes! One of my I, personal I favorites. It was part of a whole binge of, of new shit I was listening to that kind of one after the other was one upping each other. And uh, mm -hmm. during that same time, I was actually I was listening to this this song that I'm about to play first. And I was like, I'm driving on. I'm like, fuck, wait, this sounds familiar. And then it clicked to me that it's basically a Serbian version of a Greek song that I was familiar with. So, I don't know how you came about that. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can make that connection between a, a Serbian song that sounds like a Greek song you heard. No, because the, 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 the beat was like, well, it was more like Serbify, if I could say. But like, it was like, this, I could, like it was the same. And then the way he set, he sang, the way he's like, duh, duh, and I, like, I got it. I was like, oh my God, it's that fucking song. Hit us with it. Is so, what it is. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what we're, uh, what we're talking about. Now, this one is by Serbian superstar Tony Stararo. And, <laughs> and it's Vetri <laughs> Cheketri. No, Cheti. Oh, that one. <laughs> that one, yes. <laughs> my, my jam. <laughs> Oh, Steve. Oh, oh, you did a fade out there. Wow. Yeah, I, I, you, you have to have the fade out. So now, so you heard that. So we're gonna play our other one, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. I can't now, wait to you... find out what these songs are about. <laughs> oh, it's you, always it's you, always you, interesting hey. to find out what they're about. It's usually like heartbreak or a, a woman lying. Or... Oh yeah, it's always like he's been like left behind by some woman, and he's very <laughs> bitter and angry about it. <laughs> so let, let's see uh, let's see what's happening in Greece. Uh, same version. <laughs> Sounds like the weather. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is wow. that you listen to this in the car. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In Montreal, yes, I do. In Montreal, yeah. <laughs> I'm bangers. telling you, I've never heard bangers the way that Steve finds ethnic bangers. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, very sensual song. Yeah, so now um, this one is basically uh, what it's about is uh, uh, the woman that he, he kind of has designs <laughs> on. Uh, she's very stubborn and doesn't want to love him back. And um, he heard the story, you know, she's kind of like hanging out with the other guys, but, uh, <laughs> he, you know, he doesn't want to believe them. And that uh, basically she's not going to, like, change to her mind and, um, and he's fucked. <laughs> but, like, our, like, our, our general theme of, of our ethnic songs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, and again, the... the uh... The title of the songs well, and the artist. Actually, I, I didn't give the, the second title. The second one is Adiortho T from Thanos Petrelli's. And again, the other song was Thanos by, Petrelli. By uh, the good old Tony Storaro, Vetri <laughs> Cecteri. Yeah, they, they sounded exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, just, I was like, wait, hold on, I fucking know this song. And you I sure think, it's yeah. not It's not a whole, uh, what is it, uh, Chris Gaines, uh, uh, Garth Brooks oh, Garth kind Brooks. of thing going on? Yeah. Remember uh, when he had oh. that alter ego, Chris Gaines? Like Chet Faker and uh, uh, Nick Murphy. And, 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 and Nick, Nick Murphy, Murphy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, no, Tony Storaro is very... Who we both well, saw, very... me and yeah. Hans saw Chet Faker. <laughs> we, went, we went to Metropolis to see him. Did he, did, did he play gold by chance? That's a I good just remember. I'll, I'll give him that. That's a very good. I song. just remember it being extremely hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> Guys, remember Always venues fun. eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, one day. Eventually. Don't, don't remind me when uh, when you when when Jap produces a show with the Brooks. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> and then Ant could film it. Oh my God, oh, Ant! Wow. There you go. Oh my God, sick documentary yeah. about the oh, Brooks. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, actually, and you know what? If I can recommend a documentary to you that you need to watch, The Octopus mm. Teacher. The Octopus see, Teacher. See, what, a, see, see. Yeah. what a great, what a great title. Like, you it's, know it's, it's good. You it's a great it's movie. <laughs> it's a fantastic so, movie. I'm, I'm writing all these uh, down. The, the Octopus Teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so beautifully shot. The other day, Steve was over, well, like he always is, <laughs> and uh and he i see he sees my netflix list and there's the octopus teacher he literally <laughs> lost his mind he's like, <laughs> he's like what mean? the fuck are you watching no, and at the end of it it's just it's so, such an emotional like okay wow. he's kind of an octopus all right okay a fucking dog in water <laughs> <laughs> you're such an asshole <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's okay to eat you need to watch octopi it i have feelings too you need to watch it, Jesus. Let you, you fucking remember Occupy Wall Street, Occupy feelings, fuck. <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta get, uh, Tommy, you gotta come by. I was eating your hot sauce right before uh, we got on this podcast, which is probably a bad idea before you do a podcast. <laughs> 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 your guacamole chips and Tommy's hot sauce. Oh, no. It was delicious. You gotta come back here and uh, we gotta do a movie night. Uh, oh yeah the studio's definitely. almost ready we're fixing the we're, we're like doing in the flooring redone but um we're gonna we put the projector up and do movie night once this is uh all over oh my god yeah for sure yeah for sure or wow. else we can i could just show up at five in the morning if you want i'm at five and we can, and we uh, can go till about 7 30. Yeah. You know, i'm, I'm to allowed get... to do productions which is really funny you're a plateau de tournage you're allowed to operate uh because uh, if people don't watch things they're going to gouge their eyes out <laughs> over throw themselves <laughs> off building. So uh, yeah, we became essential somehow. So that's that's like basically if jazz internet goes out, he's fucked. <laughs> well no, you got DVDs. Yeah. You got DVDs. I have DVDs, uh, but uh, still I will still lose my mind. You could yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can read. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. Or, and def uh, definitely we we should uh, we should definitely do that uh once this is over we should definitely like throw a fucking right party right? yeah <laughs> throw a fucking i wonder if that's gonna ever be a thing again like a party <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, i would like to hope so oh, i God. saw a meme i saw a meme of uh francois lego and he's like way older and it's like 15 years later, and he's like, uh, you know, je vous demande un autre petit effort. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is simultaneously like. Oh, no, like just froze it. <laughs> the curfew is being extended another two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's hey, fucking bad. You look in France as, uh, in these upcoming weeks. Until until then, uh, you know, um, you you stay safe. You keep uh, keep working at um, killing it, at, uh, killing it. Keep killing it. Yeah. Keep getting the projects going. Keep fucking and uh, right. Gotta 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 make a movie, Ant. Gotta make a movie. Yeah, man. I gotta keep doing it. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know when we're uh, closer to the end of the of the editing process. With the film, I'd love to get your your thoughts on it, and um, yeah, hang out together once we uh, once we can again. Awesome, right. yeah, no, for sure. Thanks, guys. It was so fun. It was so uh, so cool to be on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Cool, Johnny's. I guess if Johnny oh, yeah, wasn't Johnny's frozen, frozen, he would say that. thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I, but he yeah. seems to be frozen, so. Um, Thank you very much, and uh, we'll we're, we're we're looking forward to having you. Let us know for sure about the about the movie, and yeah. uh, we will. Oh, I'm is back. he back? I'm hey. back. There we go. Oh, and he's no, he's perfect. He looks like he just <laughs> fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> You're back. Oh, no, he froze again. Okay, we're just gonna end it here. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ant. Uh, this was uh, this was great. Then I can't wait. To, can't wait to hang out again, man. Thanks, guys. This was super fun, man. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, Bye. so thank you. And uh, <laughs> this has been. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, uh, Danny. No, no, thank you, Alistair, and uh, hope to see you soon and uh, kick ass and shit. You know, so uh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I'd love to pick your brain on some more movie stuff. So, okay. We'll oh, let's do it.
DM me whatever, slide in my DMs. <laughs> oh, yeah. I so they such a ooh, slide into my DMs. <laughs> oh, if that's dirty, it just sounds. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Have a good thank evening. Thank you. Later. Oh. Bye.